And uh, finally, these two things, and this is why I left this 5 volt power supply on my desk, because I want to power these things up. And these are little capacitive touch switch modules. I've got uh, a four-way and an eight-way. They actually use different variants of the chip. We'll have a look at that in a minute. But what's interesting is this one goes one, two, three, four from the left. And this one goes one, two, three, four, starting bottom right. That's a bit strange. Probably something, I guess, to do with the ordering of the chip pins. It is a bit weird, though, isn't it? So let's power one of these up. In fact, let's do it while things are rolling. Um, VCC and ground. So that's, I've just checked that they are 5 volt compatible. Right. Okay, that's interesting. Um, we're certainly allowed to have more than one input on at a time, because if I bridge across two inputs, I get two lights. It's quite sensitive. One, two. In fact, it's almost impossible to press the two button without pressing the buttons either side of it. One, two. In fact, I can only do it by just touching the very bottom tip of it. Three, four. Now I have read a little bit of the chip details for this and uh, the sensitivity is set by these capacitors above each key so you could add extra capacitance there to slightly desensitize these. That is a bit of a nonsense when you can't press one individual button without triggering the ones either side of it. Interesting! Now this 8-way switch does have slightly larger pads and it is possible the light is bleaching on the camera a bit let's try and get it a bit closer it is possible to just touch one key at a time without triggering the adjacent ones but it is also very easy to trigger the adjacent ones so you wouldn't want this on an application where triggering an adjacent key was a major problem you know they are very very sensitive Okay, let's look at the chips. Actually, what I've just noticed, um, there are a lot of options that you can set on the chip, and you do that with these uh, little holes in the board. Now, this one has holes. This one, the holes are all filled in. So if I'm going to put links on there, I'm going to have to get the uh, solder sucker out, which is a bit of a nuisance. Now, really, the layout of this board is pretty stupid because these bottom four touch pads have a little trace running up between the upper four touch pads. So it's almost impossible to touch, say, eight without triggering seven because seven has that little trace running up alongside eight. And in fact, you only have to move slightly to the right and you trigger both seven and six. Bit of a nonsense, really. I suppose um, these could be used if you could tack wires onto the the active side of the capacitor and then run wires out to other um, sort of metal items for touch purposes. I might give that a try because I'm going to have to get the soldering iron out anyway to fit headers onto here to try all the various options for these. So let's just have a look at the uh, listings for these. That board appears to show those pads with holes but uh, on mine they're filled in. Okay so this one is one piece new TTP224, that's the chip, four-way capacitive touch switch, dig digital sensor module. Uh, very cheap actually, only £1.10, free shipping. This of course is also Kingful Electronic Company. Oh, and you can see the voltage range up the top there, uh, 2.4 volts to 5.5 volts. And then the other one is this one, which is the eight-channel TTP226, digital capacitive uh, switch touch sensor thing, £1.49 free postage, king for again. Um, now there's also a 16-way uh, chip, which I think is the TTP229, and there also are some single pad touch switches, um, I'll see if I can find one in a minute, which use a little 6-pin chip. So I've just gone to uh, Kingful's other items and searched for TTP, uh, so there's the 16 channel which uses the TTP229, there's the 8 channel, let me scroll down, 4 channel, 
And there's the single channel, which uses a TTP 223B. Now, a lot of these single channel touch switches don't have the pins of the chip taken out to uh, link points because that even that little six pin chip, you can do things like invert the logic of the button and have latching or non latching, I think. But a lot of them don't have the uh, connector points. The bigger ones do seem to have these connector points. So let me put some pins into those connector points and see what all the various functions are. Uh, so I've soldered in the connectors there. It's still working as it was, um, where you touch a button and the light comes on, or indeed several lights come on. But now I can start putting links, got some links here, onto these uh, to see what the features are. So let's have a look at the data sheet for the TTP226, uh, I think it was for this one. Well, I've actually gone to the TTP224 data sheet. Now this is by uh, Ton Touch, or it's a Ton Touch product by Ton Tech. So let's have a look at the different modes. Uh, so top left of that table, we've got TOG, which is the toggle mode, the bottom four entries. Uh, OD is open drain outputs, otherwise it's a CMOS sort of complementary output, I guess. And then the other one is AHLB, which is active high, active low. Um, let's try that on the TTP22. Six. The data sheet for the TTP226 isn't anything like as clear as this. We'll try the... Um, now, there doesn't appear to be a toggle uh, pin on the 226 either. So I think I'm going to have to go to that data sheet because that's the one I'm trying to uh, make work. Okay, TTP226. Now, I've just noticed something quite interesting. It says 64 steps sensitivity selectable with the SLS... E zero to five pin option. So I could uh, try reducing the sensitivity there. Um, what else have we got? Uh, direct mode, matrix mode, and serial mode. I think those are for outputs, but we don't have the sort of neat toggle modes. And we've got outputs can be selected active, high, or active, low by a pad option. Well, let's start there. This data sheet is much more confusing. Uh, okay, so I've put a link up there on the active high low button, and they are now, uh, if I could stop touching some of the pins, active. Are they all on? No, some of them aren't on. Why is that? Two of the uh, lights seem to be sensing that there's some uh, pickup. Not sure what's going on there. Anyway, they are now the other way around. If you press a button, it turns the LED off. But uh, pins two and three seem to have packed up in this mode. I don't think it's me touching something. No, they're definitely not lit up, D2 and D3. That's weird. Well, I think it might have done one of its sensitivity calibrations or something, but uh, I've the, taken the power off and put it back on, and they're all working again now. So this is the active low mode, where pressing the touch points turns LEDs off. If I touch eight, seven, and six together, you can see those three LEDs have gone off. Okay, that's good. Well, now I've put uh, a link on one of the higher order bits of this um, sensitivity select thing, which is these top four links. So the sensitivity is much reduced now. And if I now touch across the eight and the six, it's very difficult to see because the camera unfortunately bleaches out the LEDs. But the little trace for seven, which runs up between those pads, now doesn't trigger when I move my finger across, it's going eight and six. Let me see if I can get in a bit closer. See if we can see it. So that's eight and six LED, and seven doesn't actually come on at all. So the sensitivity adjustment has definitely worked. This is much less trigger happy now. It just feels more useful with the sensitivity reduced. Now you can probably see from this sensitivity table why I was so hesitant to use this data sheet. I mean, look at it, it's ridiculous. It just lists everything. There are all the uh, sensitivity pin combinations on the left. And here's some enormously complex table. But you can see the numbers, generally speaking, get bigger as you go towards the bottom. And it would appear that the bigger numbers are 
less sensitive keys. Still don't quite understand what all this is. Now here's the data for the AHL, AHL pin, the active high, active low. Um, but even here, just it's hard to read. This the TTP229, uh, 226 is just so different to the 224. And here you've got the uh, OPS, which I think is output select uh, pins. There's OPS0 and OPS1, and it looks like there are four types. Direct is where the uh, output is a debounced version of the input. Then you've got serial, where it uses clock, reset, and data to send a serial bit stream, presumably 8-bit, indicating which key was pressed. And then there are two matrix modes, a matrix 3x3 and a matrix 2x4. It's all very confusing. It almost makes me want to suck the solder out of those holes on the, the four-way one and um, use the links on there because they just make, they're just simpler. So my helping hands, my solder sucker, my soldering iron, and it looks like I'm going to have a little bit of a battle with these uh, filled in holes. I'm really annoyed that they're filled in, but it just is going to make so much more sense when I link these pins. You've got uh, active high, low, AH, LH, TOG, LPMB, whatever that is, SM, DO, and MOT D. It's just going to be more fun playing with this one, I think. Solder sucking plated through holes is extremely difficult. I knew this was going to be a real challenge, but with any luck. And sometimes when the hole is half empty, you have to actually refill it with solder in order that you can uh, get the solder back out. Yes, I am having a battle royal. Well, now the next problem I've got is that if I put links into these pads on the top side, um, I'm actually going to block out these markings. So I'm not going to know what the uh, pins do. So I'm either going to have to write all this down and then link it on the top side. I'm almost tempted to put links on the bottom, actually, so that I don't blot out these markings. I think I'm going to do that. Okay, finally, I have got my links in. They're on the back because I didn't want to blot out these little markings. You can see as I touch the board in various places, the lights come on. Now, sensitivity on this TTP, also the light, I lost the light. It's getting late now. And uh, so this is all going to have to be done in artificial light, I'm afraid. Uh, sensitivity on this unit is not controllable by links. It's only control controllable by the capacitance of these four capacitors. Uh, as indicated here in the TTP224 datasheet, uh, here it is, sensitivity can be adjusted by the capacitance 0 to 50 picofarads outside for each touch pin. So if you want uh, link selectable sensitivity, you want the TTP226, which you get on the eight-way board. Right, so now I've linked on the back uh, the active high, active low thing. So they're now active low. If I touch them, that's interesting. They're not active at all. What's happening? Well, that's interesting. The chip actually appeared to have crashed. Um, active high, these are active high now, but the link's on. So why aren't they active low? Oh, they are now. And now it's not working again. What is going on? Right, well now I've put the toggle pin on, and they do indeed toggle. Toggle 4, toggle 3, toggle 2, until you've got 3 on. If you then try to toggle the 4th, it kind of loses everything. 2, 1, 3, toggle 4 on, and they all go off. This isn't very good at all, is it? Well, now things are really going from bad to worse, because I've got it in... Uh, normal mode here, where I can turn on one or more keys. But if you turn on all four, it locks up. It's completely locked up. And the only way you can uh, reset it now is to pull the power. So I must admit, I'm not impressed. 
Right, now I've put a link on SM. That's the single mode link. So now you should only ever be able to press one key. It should lock out the others. Yes, that does seem to be working actually. So it won't let me put more than one key on. It's forcing only one key. Yeah, well that kind of works. So I thought one possibility might be input voltage. So I've come down to 3.1 volts, but that doesn't work at all. The LEDs are just dim and kind of flashing on and off and just doing weird things. No, that doesn't work. Let's take it right up to the maximum that it can handle, 5.5 volts. Uh, so I've got slightly over spec, 5.6 volts. I'm in toggle mode, turn all four on. The thing locks up. I'm ready to give up on this. I'm just wondering, could this be poor implementation of the... Oh, it's uh, come back to life. That's interesting. Uh, poor implementation of the application circuit, or, um, or maybe even a fake chip. I don't know. So let me just sum this up. Buggy chips uh, that crash when you're trying to do various functions poorly implemented uh, application layouts because you've got these uh, lines running up between keys. The sensitivity seems to work on this one, but this one has crashed while I've been playing with it. This one has crashed. I mean, this can only mean one thing. I'm going to have to buy more of these and do a video on them in their own right. They're just so bad, they're intriguing. I'm going to buy the 16-way and the 1-way. But anyway, that's it for the moment. Cheerio!